Okay, I promise you guys, it doesn't look like it, but I have more than just this Las Vegas t-shirt. Um, you just I was never get to see my other shirt. I was like, I always wear this one. Hi everybody, it's me, Maddie, and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Maddie, and I usually fail TBRs, and so I'm kind of apprehensive to post this, but I've been working on this TBR game for a while. I've had this idea in my mind for a while, and I want to uh, post this video and talk about it, and I want to try and read the books that I'm going to have to read for this month, but yes. So, if you're wondering what... I'm playing because the title, I don't really know what I'm going to call it still, if I'm going to call it The Game of TBR or uh, Life of TBR because it is a Game of Life uh, remake, remake, like a TBR, a bookish version of The Game of Life. So The Game of Life is one of my favorite board games and so I'm really excited to be able to implement it. I don't know if I did this that well, honestly, I bet there's people who can make this game so much better. But as somebody who uh, can't read a lot of books in a month because they're a mood reader, uh, like specifically like picked out books, I kind of did this as best as I could. But uh, yeah, let's talk about the game. If you've never played the game of life, it's a super fun game and it's just a game of life. It, it's only fun when you play with more than yourself because if you play by yourself, then you're obviously going to win. Anyway, so basically this game comes with a spinner and you can use the spinner if you want, but um, the spinner sucks. So next time I play this, I'm going to use dice. So yeah, but I used a spinner this time and I regret that deeply. But yeah, there's a spinner and um, there's people. If you've ever played life, this is what I'm doing. So basically I just used this board that comes with the game. And each time I play this, if I play it more than once, I really hope I do. But if I don't read all the books in October, I'm not going to play this more than once. Um, so basically, you just play. And when you get these action cards, you always like land on action cards. You have bookish prompts you have to fulfill. Whenever you land on these stops, and the stops in this game you don't have to stop at unless you roll a specific number. So if, as you guys will see when I spun this, when I did my uh, rolls, spins, whatever, when I did my little moves, I got a 10 that led me all the way and I had to stop exactly at this stop sign. So at 10 rolls, I landed on the stop. If I hadn't gotten a 10, if I got a 9 and then say I got a 2, I would not have to stop at the stop because these stop signs here in my version of this game, I made it to where if you land on one, you have to land on it and that adds another book to your TBR. So um, that's why I did that because I... I'm not going to like purposely stop on there for TBRs. So yes, if you roll a number that lands you specifically on the stops, then you have to add another book to your TBR and then you just continue on. So with life, there are these payday spots. And if you land on a payday with one of your spins, then you can basically do like you get to change one of the books on your TBR and they don't have to fit the prompt card that you got for them. Or if this is the first thing you get, you could either save that um, for a later prompt in this game or you can do what I'm most likely going to do if I ever land on them and that is to just save it for a mood read, whatever I feel like I want to read, then I will be picking that um, for it. But it's honestly, you could pick whichever one you want to do. Uh, but I'm most likely, if I land on it first, I'm going to pick it for a mood prompt. But if I don't land on it first, then I have to uh, use it for any other prompt in the board. And it could just be whatever prompt book I want to change off my TBR. If you spin the same number or if you roll, if you're using dice, the same number three times, then you have to add another book to your TBR. And you can either like have that for this specific game or you can add it to where it rolls over as well. So what I'm going to be doing is just one specific game, I think. I guess, I guess it's just going to depend if I do continue on. Because this is the first time I'm playing this game. And if I don't read the books, then you're probably not going to see it monthly. So 
Um, yeah. But if you get the same number, like if you roll, if you spend three the same, if you spend three three times, then you have to add another book to your TBR. And I think that I will probably carry it on. I just said I think I'll probably only stick to a game, but I think I will carry it on just because it makes it more fun. And also, I kind of think I'm gonna regret that. So. If I play this more than once, of course, of course. If you land on a house, which if I can find one for you guys to show you, if you land on a house board, then you have to read your most recent purchase. And if you land on a baby, either the uh, triplets, baby, one, twins, or whatever it is, if you land on one of those, then somebody's going to have to pick a book for you. And if you want, you can make it to where if you land on twins, then you have to add two books and your somebody in your family or your one of your friends has to pick two books for you. Um, but I'm, I don't know if I'm going to do that because like I said, I'm a mood reader. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much all of the rules I have for right now. If, um, I haven't gotten here yet, and if I do decide to play this more, then when you get to the retirement area, so when you get to the end of this game, you have to retire because it is the game of life. So if you get to here and it's time for you to retire, uh, if you go the risky route, that's just going to be like you land on red, then you have, um... You have to add another book to your TBR, or if you land on green, and then you're free. And then these yellow ones are just if you already haven't added something to your TBR yet. Like if you started here, and you decided you wanted to go that way, but you only land on a yellow, then that's just a normal prompt. If you land on green, then you don't have to add anything to your TBR unless you want to, and you don't have to pull any prompts. And if you land on red, then you have to add another book to your TBR, and then the payday is just the same. So there is that. I'm really excited to bring to you guys this. I really hope I read all my books in October so I can play this again because I had a lot of fun playing it. So without further ado, let us get into the rolls. All right, so we have my board here and we have my little person in the little blue car. Uh, blue is one of my least favorite colors, but I also don't like pink, so we're gonna go with that. So, and then, Oh yay, I'm moving one. That's great. This is not a very good spinner, but I'm gonna go with it. We have my prompt cards, and I'm sorry that the lighting's kind of bad. My camera's literally right in front of my light. But we're going to pick this one right here, and it is Karate! Read a book heavily focused on war. Alright, first prompt. I already know exactly what book I'm picking for that. Okay, so for the first roll slash spin, we got the prompt of karate, or to read a book that's heavily focused on war, or like war training, fighting, that type of thing. So for this, I picked The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. Now, I, I already know that this is a really big book, and I already know that I'm probably going to come back to regret this. Is it? No, it's only 510 pages about that. Actually, this might not be that big of a book. I mean, 535 pages, that's a big book, but you get what I'm saying. But if you don't know what this is about, I don't really know what it's about either, but um, Jen from Jen's Bookshelf read this, and she didn't like how the first like 300 pages were really focused on war, I think, and so that's basically where this is coming in from. This is a very war-heavy book, and I'm actually really excited about that because I love violence in books, okay, like in video games, not in real life, okay? Um, so I'm really excited to read this, even though it's a really big book, I'm hoping that I'll be able to get into it, even though it takes like 300 pages to get into, and the first like 300 pages are kind of boring because they're really focused on war training, I still hope that I'm going to love it and get through it really quickly, so this is my first book on my TBR. Let's hope we get a big spin, one, two, three, a ten! We did get a big spin, okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No! No, no, no! I have to add another book to my TBR! No! Dang it! Okay. So, now I have to get four books. Great. Just what I wanted. I hate this. Okay. <laughs> Let's go again. 
Okay, I got a five. So, um, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Okay. Second book at a four now. Yay. Love it. Um, uh, we'll pick this one right here. And this is, uh, all, all sold out. Read a popular book. So the next prompt we ended up landing on, rolling, whatever it was, was all sold out, which is to read a popular book. Now, I didn't know what I was going to do for this, but I ended up picking a pretty simple book, and that is Out of My Mind by Sharon M. Drapper. I read this back in sixth grade, and, oh wait, I read it in fifth grade, sixth grade, and seventh grade, and I planned on reading it every, rereading it every single year, and then I did pick it up for eighth or freshman year of high school, so now that I'm a sophomore, I thought I would pick this back up, because this has, like, over 100,000 ratings on Goodreads, and this is one of my favorite middle grades of all time. It is such a beautiful middle grade, even though it's contemporary, I still love it to death, and I'm very excited to dive back into this. So not only do I think it's going to be a quick read because it's a fairly short book. It's like only 300 pages, I think. Um, uh, oh, it's only 295 pages. But this is also, like I said, going to be a reread for me. And last time I read this, I read it fairly quickly. So I'm very excited to reread this because I do miss little Melody and uh, her family because they're so sweet and I do love them. So very excited for this book. I'm not afraid about finishing this. I definitely think I'll be able to finish it. And seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whew! I almost had to add another book. I was not. You know, I would have. I would have thrown. I would have pushed my camera older, but I had to do that. But we're gonna pick this prompt, and this is date night. Read a book with a stunning cover. So the next prompt we ended up getting was date night, which is to read a book with a stunning cover. And I'm picking a book that I don't think has a stunning cover. I think it has a pretty cover, but I wouldn't say it's stunning. And for this, I picked The Wizards of Once by Cressida Cowell. I wanted to get a book on here that I know for sure I'm going to be reading in October because my granny and I are going to be buddy reading this. And I think this is a really pretty cover, but I wouldn't say it's stunning. I do have a middle grade on my TBR that I think is absolutely stunning when it comes to its cover. And I was really going to pick that, but then I just don't know for sure if my granny and I are going to read it. or And I don't want to read it by myself because I've already tried to read it by myself and I just couldn't get into it. So I want to save it for, my, for me and my granny. Um, and I just don't know if we're going to have time to read it in October. So that's why I picked this. So I'm kind of stretching the rules a little bit, but it's not like an ugly cover. I feel like this is a fine choice because I think it's, like I said, I think it's really pretty. It's just not the most pretty cover that I have on my shelf. Last roll. Fingers crossed is the last roll. We definitely won't be getting any uh, same numbers. Uh, so that's good. Because oh, I don't want that. Alright. Well, here we go. Last spin. A six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So close to a payday. So close to a payday. Ugh! Okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. So, last prompt. Holy goodness. I guess I didn't plan ahead for this. So, this one is uh, Car Crash. Read a book you believe you will... Uh, read a book you believe will be a painful experience. I don't know why I struggled so much reading that. And then we had... We, uh, we landed on a stop for our second prompt. And so that means we had to add a fourth book. And for that prompt... We got the one, if I was going to have to read four books, I would have liked to have got a prompt that I actually liked. But we didn't. I got Car Crash. Read a book you will be, you believe will be a painful experience. And this could be for literally anything you think is going to make you sad, you don't think you're going to enjoy, you think it's going to make you angry. Like, whatever you think is going to be painful, then you could pick that. And for that, uh, and I, I picked one that I think I'm going to hate, and that is A Kiss the Dark by Gina Sioka, I think. I don't know who this, I don't know where the dress jacket went. I took it off, uh, uh, like in July, and I don't know where it went, um, which is fine, because I think it looks a lot pretty without the dress jacket. But this is a contemporary YA romance. 
Um, I got this when I was in the mood for YA romance, and then by the time it arrived at my house, I was back into reading fantasy. So I never got around to reading it, but I'm going to read it just because I own it. And I don't mind romance and YA, contemporary romance. I just usually like to read it on my phone. I, seen, I, I found out that I read it better when I read it online and uh, electronically. So... Yeah, I'm going to try and get through this. Uh, I don't know. It's not that big of a book, and it's got a pretty decent-sized font. I just, I don't want to read this, but I know that if I don't read it now, I'm never going to, like, a lot of the contemporaries I own on my shelves. If I don't read it now, I'm never going to get to it. So, I, this is my, this is like the one book I'm afraid that I'm not going to read, which means it's going to have to carry on into my next TBR if I do decide to do another one of these. And that, again, scares the crap out of me. So this is going to be a priority for the month. And then the big chunky chunk is also going to be a priority for the month, Rage of Dragons. So, yes. So this is my lovely TBR for October. It doesn't seem that far-fetched. Like, guys, it doesn't seem that far-fetched. Except for these two. that I, One of them I don't want to read. And the other one is a very big, chunky fantasy. But the other two are smaller middle grades. So I definitely think this is doable. It's just if I'm going to like get into one of them and then get like 300 pages into them and then not want to finish them. <coughs> Literally every book I read. But I'm hoping that I'll be able to finish them and be able to bring to you guys a November TBR. Um, so yeah, if you guys don't already follow me on Goodreads and would like to, because I will be posting about the books I read in this month, obviously. It's linked in the description box, but if you don't want to follow my Goodreads, whether because you don't want to or you don't have Goodreads, then um, you can subscribe because I will be posting a wrap-up at the end of October, early November. I'll talk about the books I read in September and October, so you'll be able to find out whether or not I read these for... <laughs> beautiful books. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I had so much fun filming it and I'm really excited. To, I'm actually like really excited to start these. So I don't want to say. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you didn't have a big fat thumbs up and subscribe down below because I post videos on the channel every single Monday. And so see you guys all next Monday for another video. Bye guys. And hey, don't forget I'm still a freaking bulldozer. Bye.